Hi everyone, this is KM Wyland, and I'm coming to you with another video about uplifting and powerful entertainment choices that you can make during this time when we're all facing some uncertain emotions as well as maybe some extra time at home. I know that I've already seen many people, myself included, who are uh, seeing this as an opportunity to maybe actually tackle our existing to be red piles which for me at this point is literally a pile that is as tall as myself and uh, maybe actually making a dent in that. But as I did previously in the video I did about my top five happy movies that you can watch during quarantine life, I would just again encourage you to really make conscious choices toward hopeful and powerful stories during this time. We don't need to be bringing into our lives things that signify in any measure death. And by that I don't necessarily mean stories that don't feature death, as you'll see. But I do mean stories that in the end are ones that are going to encourage you to be a better person, to live your best life during this period, and live it in a way that's gonna have the best impact on the situation and on everyone around you. And also hopefully in a way that's going to prepare you for amazing things that are gonna happen after this is all finished. If you're a writer, maybe this is the perfect time to really start thinking about um, the kind of stories that you want to put out into the world and start reading those stories to get a feel for how to create them in the best way. Anyway, today I'm going to share with you five of my favorite uh, books that I've found life-changing and perennially um, uplifting and encouraging and exciting in case you haven't read them or you want to revisit them at this time. The first one I'm going to talk about is as I said, a book that definitely features death. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Um, most people are probably familiar with this. It's award-winning, was adapted into a movie with Jeffrey Rush, and it is a movie about um, children during the Holocaust. So heavy stuff, it's actually narrated by death. And I hesitated before including it because it is a really heavy book about a heavy subject. But aside from the fact that I think there's a lot of catharsis to be had here, and also aside from the fact that it's one of the single most inspiring and uplifting books that I've ever read. Um, I think we need, you know, we need reality during this time. I'm not encouraging fluff or that we're just uh, reading, you know, happy, happy stuff, which is fine. But there's no reason that we can't also tackle really powerful and deep subjects, um, but particularly ones that are doing it in a way that in the end are very life affirming. So this is one of my top favorite books of all time. If you haven't read it, Highly recommend it. And then, I actually haven't read this one yet, but my recommendation is pretty much for anything written by the late, great uh, Sir Terry Pratchett, who writes um, comical fantasy that has a very serious bent. Um, they're funny, they're parodies often, but there's, there's an inherent sense of, of goodness and kindness that kind of runs through the center of them. Uh, this, Feet of Clay, is the third book in the Guards Guards trilogy within his larger series in the Disc world. I haven't read this one yet, but I love the first two in the series, particularly the second one. So um, if you haven't checked out uh, this, start with Guards Guards, and uh, hopefully, like me, you'll just laugh your head off and completely enjoy it. Then I am going to recommend Jane Eyre. Um, I've read this book many times at this point. I did an, adaptate, uh, um, an annotated version specifically for writers that I did for Writer's Digest a few years ago, and literally this book changed my life. It taught me about character arcs, but beyond that, I think it's just, it's such a magnificent story of transformation and empowerment. So if you haven't read it, um, you can check it off your classics reading list, but definitely recommend that one. So the next book I'm going to recommend is a fantasy called Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. Um, this is the first book in a series. I have to say I did not like the sequels, um, but the first book kind of stands on its own. And even though there's definitely some dark stuff in here, um, what stands out most to me in the months since I've read it, or the years actually, is just the, the steadfastness of the, and the goodness um, represented to me in the main character. 
Um, he's, he's a character that's definitely become um, one of the most memorable characters probably in my own reading. So if you like fantasy, totally recommend this. You can decide if you want to go on, but I don't think you have to. And my recommendation probably would just be to stop here because it's just, it's such a great book on its own. And finally, I'm going to recommend a book I'm actually reading right now on Kindle. Um, the Splendor Falls by Susanna Kearsley. Not necessarily recommending this book because I just started it and don't know if it's great, but I love Susanna Kearsley. And she just seems like the perfect author for me to be reading right now. Her stories are nominally romances, but they're um, really historical stories that are just rich in historical detail and dive really deep into particularly medieval time periods. Um, the, the, if you want to be swept away to a different place, um, and particularly a place that's represented by gentleness and goodness, um, nobility, honor, that kind of thing. Definitely recommend her stuff. She's, she's slow. She's what I would call leisurely. So you have to be patient, just kind of roll with it. But at the same time, there's something very relaxing, I think, in that. So this is, this is just a pleasure read for me that I'm really enjoying right now. It just totally fits the bill. So those are my top five recommendations for reading as you're tackling your TBR piles right now. I would love to hear um, your own suggestions that you could share with me and with the others who will be watching this, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. Please share your own top recommendations for stories that we can use to find empowerment and encouragement during this time in our lives. I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and I will talk to you again later.